Hi guys, I hope you're well. Welcome to my primary school classroom tour. In my previous classroom tours, I taught in year three, but now I am in year six. So let's take you inside my classroom to show you what's inside. To start off with, we have this welcome display. This has been there since the first day. This is something that I had from year three, but the kids quite like to, to mess around with the skeleton. This is a position I like to put it in, but sometimes the leg will be up here, or you know, you'll, you'll have double hands up for something that's happy. Um, from there, we move on to our Japanese door display. This marked part of a topic. We had a, a topic that was called location, 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 where we studied all sorts of different countries and looking at lots of geographical skills. Since I went to Japan, and you can see other videos about Japan on my channel, this is a bit of a selfish display, if I'm completely honest with you. But one thing that's really nice about year six is just the level of detail in some of these posters. I told them that I was going to be going to Japan and you need to create for me a bit of a fact file about Japan. And they did an absolutely astonishing job. So much so that I have just kept this up now for a couple of terms. Children absolutely love creating these and kind of gave them the option. Do you want to change it? Do you want to keep it? But they just wanted to keep this up, which I, I can't disagree with. It's, it's great. So let's step into the classroom. And to start off with, we have the typical area. Down here, you'll be able to see all of the different books. In year six, it's quite nice because the children are a little bit more independent so that they can just pick up those different books and they'll just hand those out uh, as and when the different lessons come about. Talking about different lessons, this is my timetable down here. We've got lots of different timetabling bits. In the morning, we'll have different children, depends on what time they come in. They'll go, oh, can I do the timetable? And you might have seen this before. They'll just change the timetable, but I've just recently pulled those off. We are coming to the last days of the year, and this is why this message is on here. This is something that one of the children wrote on there, which was uh, really lovely. I kind of feel like I just want to keep this on uh, until the end of the academic year now. <laughs> This is morning activity. Now I find that actually they're quite independent with the morning activity, so much so that I can just make a couple of notes on here and they just crack on with it. They've become really good with it. And these are my pens of choice if you're interested in these types of things. In the past, I had uh, these double-sided pens by Beryl. They're really hard to find in the UAE. So I've switched to these uh, Chisel Point Pentel Max Flow. They are really smooth. Uh, one of those things. Straightforward, definitely recommend them, but we'll move on to the next area. Interactive whiteboard. Again, similar interactive whiteboard throughout the school. You'll still see the different teddy puppets. Obviously teaching year six, we don't use these guys as much, but they all know the stories behind them and they are, you know, they're our mascots at the end of the day and they do still quite enjoy having them. If I move one, they know and they do ask. So the children, even in year six, still care. Interactive whiteboard, again, use it for mainly Active Inspire is what we use as a school. Really straightforward. Down here, pencils, pens, again, because the children are more independent, they'll have their pencil cases full of stuff, but if they need those bits of colouring things, they know that they can just come down here. They're really good. With organising, sometimes children will just organise, they'll often ask me, oh, can I be the person that organises the pencils? A bit short on pencils, it's at the end of the academic year. But we move on to perhaps the most important area, and that is my desk. This classroom is really interesting because you have the fire door, which is over here. And what that means is that as people come in, they can see straight into this classroom. And in some ways that's great, in other ways it can be a bit of a challenge. So I like to try and tuck away a little bit into here so that at least when I'm doing my work, I can concentrate. This is generally what the desk has looked like for the majority of the year. Uh, I can see out, I can see across the classroom too. I've got my laptop, which is a MacBook Air, uh, which is really good for work. This is a nice idea I've picked up from a colleague. I think this is like an art easel type thing. And then I just keep my organizer on here. This plant, I, I it just can't, I don't know what it is. It just keeps living. It only needs like a tiny bit of water. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that plant's dead but it seems to come back to life. As you can see, it's starting to become the end of the year and starting to get a few class presents and bits and pieces like that. So this one says, thank you so much for everything. I will miss you a lot. Uh, and say hi to me, to my fiance. <laughs> I will always remember you, it's my favorite. All those lovely messages, it's that time of year where you start to get those in and it is always hard, especially in year six when I've taught these guys for so long to say goodbye. In the drawer, I'm not gonna lie to you, these are fairly, fairly 
disorganized now. I like to try and keep it in a priority system. So the things that I have as a priority for the day-to-day -day basis, I keep in here. So any, you know, lanyards, highlighters, bits of blue tack. That is the last bit of blue tack that I have left the whole academic year. Um, and then any other bits and pieces that I might need. Down here, I have sticker packs, which are of course important, even in year six. They do prefer the, the smelly ones, but yeah, definitely always recommend stickers if you are teaching primary school. I've got a few stickers down here as well, but I don't really touch things down in this drawer. It's mainly bits for display. In this cupboard, I don't even know whether I should show you this cupboard, to be honest with you. If I'm completely honest, it was organized. However, as the year's gone on, it's kind of become a dumping ground. I don't have a nice closet this time. So as you can kind of see, it's not very organized. I've kept any notes on the front here. It's just quite nice to have. Um, yeah, that's as disorganized as you can think of. From there, we move on to this little area, I kind of use this as a bit of a shoe closet and also my resources for the day. So I'll keep different activities across here and then I'm just able to pick up those different things. This is a really fun one we've recently done as we're coming towards the end of the year. It's what will Mr. Blake will do this summer? This person said Mr. Blakemore could go to the beach in Miami, we'll try a sombrero in Mexico, go to uh, Canada, all sorts of different things. They're always quite entertaining to have a look at. There we go. I often wear trainers to work, so I'm just able to switch those over. This is generally where I place my stuff because I don't have a closet to put things. These are my meal plans. I get these every single day. They are fantastic. I've got scrap paper, multi-link. Children like to both play with it and it's good for maths. And then my bag just goes in the corner. As we come to one of the tables, I've got to optimistically hope that this one is organized. Yes. This is what the drawers should look like. I can promise you if I pull out other drawers, they, they don't look like this. Inside these drawers, children keep whiteboards, whiteboard pens, and then they'll also keep any other bits and pieces that they might need. So, displays. Displays are obviously one of the most important things in the classroom for children's learning environment. This is one you will have seen from other classroom tours. This is my growth mindset display. I find that at the start of the year, this is just a really nice, easy one to set up. We've got the great letter in here, which was free from TeachPal. Always recommend that site for lots of amazing things. And because they're year six, they are fantastic at creating lots of great, colorful growth mindset heads. Inside, there's lots of nice things of things that they should say to themselves, such as never give up, I'll do better, all those bits and pieces. And then we move on. So moving on again, we've got our UAE display. This is just again, a nice easy one to fill one of the windows. It's got all the different shapes, which we study with year six and the different Emirates, along with a UAE timeline, looking at some of the different events that have happened throughout the year. Moving on, <laughs> this looks interesting. I've given the children ownership over this display. To be honest, as long as the words are on here, I'm not too bothered. These are the certain words for spelling, part of year five, six high frequency words that they should be looking at this half term. And because the children have taken ownership, they actually quite enjoy the display. Uh, there's lots of different words that you can see on here. Again, giving the children some ownership. Reading area has not become much of a reading area. I think that will become more of an emphasis in next year. Um, we've had, this has often been here, but we've moved this because we now have Alexa. As you can see, Alexa has now formed part of the classroom. I have made previous videos Alexa about- Alexa is an intelligent personal assistant developed by Amazon. Yeah. First used Cheers. Amazon Echo Alexa, stop. Amazon Echo Dot devices developed by Amazon Alexa, Amazon stop. 126. It is capable of voice interaction, music playback, making to-do lists, okay. setting alarms, streaming podcasts. Yeah, slowly. Fantastic. Thanks, Alexa. So as you can see, Alexa forms part of the classroom and uh, has been quite interesting. We are able to do things like music, reading stories, the music quiz. We can see a few different books and bits and pieces here. But this definitely needs a bit of organization too. English display. This is more of a complete English display. As you can see, we've got our wonderful words and vocabulary up here, part of our English. And up here in the past, depending on what topic there has been, we've had all sorts of great vocabulary, words that they perhaps might not have seen before. This is what we call a writing journey. So we've got the genre at the moment, which is a non-chronological report. 
purpose is to inform that we start with our cold write. So this is a cold write of a non-chronological report, something that they might understand. From there, we move on to a waggle, looking at the features inside the waggle, which is, stands for what a good one looks like, looking at all those different features and identifying them from there. Then typically what we would do is practice some features and then some of the key skills for that. But because it's kind of coming towards the end of the year, we moved on to some other bits and pieces, specifically artistic. And then we did have some skills, don't have them on the display to show you at this time, but this is eventually what they come out with, which is their published piece of non-chronological work, which is really lovely. From there, we move on to maths. I've tried something a little bit different this year with maths. Again, keeping the vibrant vocabulary. This is a bit more of a working wall where we can start to write different things that the children might not understand. Specifically for those lessons, children might come up and write things as they're working. But then adopting Rosenshine's principle, we've got last lesson, last week, last term. Now, I'd love to tell you that I update this every single lesson, but if I'm an honest teacher, because I think honesty is important on this channel, this is something which is quite hard to maintain, but I will recommend that the children do utilize these numbers, again, from Teach Valve, completely free. I find that they're really straightforward. Funny story with this. When I was moving from year three to year six, this is something that I used all of the time in year three. I dragged this whiteboard, it was a different one, from year three to year six, thinking that I was going to use it all the time, then they said, we've got loads of those. So I had to drag it all the way back. But I've not really used this throughout the year. I can probably list on one hand the amount of times that I've used this. So I think this will, this will stay. As you can see, science display, very similar with using this stuff, which is the, the whiteboard material. I'll list that as something to go and purchase in the description. This has been really good for children to then add their own ideas onto this along with some of their work. I find it's really important for children to take ownership of displays, showcasing some of the amazing work that they do. And we've got MSCS, which stands for Moral, Social, Cultural Studies. And in this topic, we look at all sorts of different things related to being a good human, different cultures, and specifically different societal norms and things like that too. You can see these little guides to being a moral person, which are really lovely as well. This over here, is an unfortunate reminder that this year, although I've gone from year three to year six, this year is going to be my last year in year six. I'm gonna be moving, but that will be for another video. Bit of green because Dubai doesn't unfortunately get enough green. And that brings us to the end of the classroom tour. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video looking inside my classroom. As you can probably see, there's lots of different things going on, but hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed it, feel free to like it and then subscribe to future teaching videos. At the moment, it is the weekend. They turn off the AC in the classroom. So I am extremely hot. We're gonna end the video here. If you wanna check out more bits and pieces about teaching in Dubai, becoming a teacher in Dubai, make sure you check out my website, teachtraveltriumph.com, where the guide is available to support you with that process. Hopefully I'll see you in a future video. Until then, 